Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf Hayyaymi, Nadorim Daf Chav Beis. We are holding, let's, let's back up to three lines from the top of the Yemen. Bar Barte de Rav Yanai Saba. This incident occurs with the son of Rav Yanai Saba's daughter, so his grandson. Also, look at me, Rav Yanai Saba. He approaches his grandfather with a nether to look after. He wants him to release him of his nether. Amrulay Sir Rav Yanai asks him as follows Ilu Havayatas the Paschen Pinkascha. Look, had you have known that in Shemaim they will now open your ledger, in Shemaim they will examine your records, Umimash Mishin they will examine your deeds. That is to say, like this, that in Shemaim they will view your your commitment, your nether, as an expression of confidence. Look, this fellow is so confident and reliant on his abilities to fulfill all these extra commitments and vows. Look, let's see how righteous he really is. So this will facilitate a re-examination of your status in Shemaim. If you would have known that, that that's going to happen, if you would have been aware of the fact that your nether will bring about that result, will trigger that process in Shemaim. Mino Dart, would you have undertaken this nether? That's what he asked his grandson. So he got him all, you know, intimidated and scared. Amr Leiloi, he says, no, no, sure, of course not, never. Vishari, he used that method to release him of his nether. Amr Abba, my crow, where do we find this concept in a Pasuk? When you make a nether that creates bikr, examination in Shemayim. Says the Gemara, Va'afag of the Pasuk of even the Rav used this meth- method to discourage this fellow from keeping his nether, we don't employ this method. Why? The Ran explains. Perhaps this fellow will just acquiesce out of intimidation. When he gets this criticism directed at him, he'll just back out and pretend that, yeah, he has a change of heart, even though perhaps he's... he's uh, not really prepared to back out of his nether. It's not sufficient reason to back out, but he will pretend that it is out of bashfulness and shame. So don't, we don't really employ this method as a way to do at our and daughter. We have to know that he's really genuine in his regret. So we don't use, use this method, nor do we use the following method. Aloy paschinan bahadachor naisa. Nor do we allow him out of his nether by way of the other method. Which other method? The Omar Rabba Barachana, Omar Rabbi Yechanan. My Pasachle, Rabban Gamliel, Nahu Saba. What system did Rabban Gamliel use to release this older fellow of his nether? He quoted to him a Pasach, a Pasach in Mishli. Yesh Boite, Kimat Kero is Cherev, Veloshen Chachamim Marpe. We learn from here that Boite, Bata means to express oneself. Verbally, Kola Baita, one who does that, he expresses himself and commits himself with Nidarim and commitments and vows. Ro'oi Daikroi Becharev. He is deserving of being struck by a, th- by a sword. So making a nether is not really advisable. Ela Lashon Chachamim Marpe. But lucky to him that the words of the Chachamim, the Atarath Nidarim, Offered by the Chacham Marpe, that heals him, that undoes his nether. So he was just illustrating to this Saba how detrimental, how unrecommended a nether is, and that facilitated his regret and allowed him to release uh, the Saba of his nether. The Farshim point out that Baita is an external expression, it's just like Minasaf of it's just words without much contemplation behind them. Boite, just going and making the dharam freely, that's not recommended. The chachamim who, uh, who, whose speech reflect a deeper contemplation, it's an expression of deeper insight, that brings about healing. So typically we don't employ these methods because they're intimidating. 
and aren't necessarily reflective of a person's true regret. Nor do we employ the following method to a person who's coming for a Torah's nedarim, the Tanya of Nasan Ayman. Making a nether is so frowned upon. You know, the uh, Ran brings a Yerushalmi. Hashem tells a person, is it not enough for you? All those limitations and restrictions and Yisurim and the Torah, you're trying to add more. First keep what you're meant to keep and then look to add more. Hanoider, Tzanyar Ibn Asun Aymer, Hanoider, a fellow commits to a nether unnecessarily. So he's thinking uh, in lofty terms, I'm going to, you know, add restrictions, I'm going to you know, elevate my level of observance. Actually, Ki'ilu Bana Bama. It's as though he built an alternate Mizbeach, a competing Mizbeach to the Mizbeach in the Beis Migdash. He's creating his own track. And in fact, if a person fails to nullify that nether, he keeps his nether, he carries it through, it's even worse. It's as though he brings a carbon on that bama. He's actualizing that, you know, um, alternate, alternate commitment. Says the Gemara, Beresha Paschinam. So we have two parts of Nassan's price. Making the nether is terrible, and actually keeping it is even more terrible. Beresha Paschinam. We can use the first part to facilitate regret on account of the petitioner. The safer, what about the second part, which is more severe sounding? We use it. Contra of Kahana, the following was the correct version of this halach. I'm sorry, the uh, previous was the correct version. Rav Tavyumi Mas Nihachi. Contra of Tavyumi, it was meant to be learned differently. We have two parts of Nassan's presentation. The nether is like a bama, the keem of the nether is like a carbon on that bama. So, contra of Rav Tavyumi, it was like this. Besefer Lepaschinan, all agree. We don't use that second severe sounding, harsh sounding uh, description to um, facilitate regret. It's too intimidating. Perhaps it isn't necessarily a reflection of this fellow's true, genuine sentiments. That's for the safer. But Beresha, the first part, which isn't so harsh sounding, Abaya Omar Paschinan, Rav Amalei Paschinan, we have Machlekes, whether or not we use it. And what's the Allah of Ilkha Salih Paschina and Loibrash will be safe for? Not on the first and not on the second. What else? Vile Paschina, Nami Bahad Shmuel, nor do we use Shmuel's lesson to release a nether. To Omar Shmuel, Afal Pisha, Makaimo, Nikra Rush, even if a person actually fulfills his nether commitment, he's called a Russia. It's not recommended. Omar Ravo, my crow, where do we find this in the Pasik? A keeping. A personal nether is equated to wickedness. By refraining from making nedarim that avoids chet. So we have the term sechtal. And we employ exer shava using these words. Linder. Here we have the word sechtal. And elsewhere. Sham Rishaim Chadlu Regez, we have the Lashon Chadlu, which is like Sechtal, synonymous with Rishaim. Omar of Yosef, Af Anana Metanina. We don't need to go to those Psukim. In our Mesechta, we already have a, a Mishnah, which describes a Neder Neder as such. Back on Davtes, Kenidre Rish Kisherim, Loyam Raklum. A fellow gets up and says, I will uh, emulate the Kishem, righteous people, in terms of their Nadarim, he hasn't said anything because Kishem don't do Nadarim. But when he says, Knidr Rishayim, I'm going to emulate the, the uh, Rishayim as they make Nadarim. Nadar, but Nazar, Ubekarim, Ubrishvua, this is a tantamount to a commitment regarding Nadarim and Aziris and Shvua. Clearly, only Rishayim, people who act inappropriately, irresponsibly, they make Nadarim. Omar Rabbi Shmuel Bar Nachmeni Omar Bionis. Kol Akayis, you meant to know that if a person exhibits anger, Kol Minei Gehenim Shotim Boy, he is now being ruled by all types of Gehenim. 
anger is a manifestation of of a fire of heat which is comparable to the fire of Gehenna by removing Kaas from within you, you shelter yourself from Gehenna. Why? Vahavei Ra, Ra is a reference to Gehenna. Ve'en Ra el Gehenna. Shanemar, as it says, Kol Pa'il Hashem L'ma'neu V'gam Rasha L'yayim Ra. So Rasha and Ra go together. So the Ra here is a description of the Gehenna, which is the ultimate destination of the Rasha. By removing kas milubecha, you are protecting yourself from Gehenna. But not only that, when a person gets involved in kas, it harms, harms him physically. It can be affected by hemorrhoids. An angry heart generates those other consequences. Kilian Enaim, Vidave Nefesh, what is that a reference to? What type of medical condition? Ezo Dover Shem Chalas Enaim, Umadavis Anefesh. What creates this detrimental effect on one's one's eyes and brings agony to his Nefesh? Have Oima Il Tachtonius, this Tachtonius condition. There was a story regarding Ula, the Miskela Ardi Israel, while he was traveling up to Israel from Babel. As he's traveling, two individuals from the town of Mechoiza were walking beside him and escorting him up to Eretz Yisrael. So his, um, he was walking along with his travel com- uh, com- you know, um, companions. Suddenly one of these companions gets up and he's... Um, He's all mad at his friend, and he shechts him, he kills him. So this uh, violent fellow turns to Ula, the tzaddik, and he says, Yoz, Avdi, did I, uh, did I do okay? Did you approve? So Ula was just uh, afraid to oppose him. He says, he says, yeah, in, for sure. This was the right, uh, the right response to what this fellow did to you. Not only that, the parley basically to uncover his neck, make it uh, more effective, he should die quicker. When Ula arrived in Eretz Yisrael and came to Rav Yechanan, Amrlei, Ula was very perturbed by this, you know, the story, and he he started regretting that perhaps he was, you know, he had encouraged a murderer. Dilma chas v'shal machziki de avera. Perhaps I encouraged a fellow, a murderer. I shouldn't have, uh, you know, complimented him. Amrlei, so Rav Yechanan says not to worry. You were just trying to save your life. You had no choice but to sort of go along with this fellow and his shenanigans. Rabbi Yechanan, Rabbi Yechanan, having heard the story, look what this fellow does out of extreme anger. He was so surprised, out of wonderment. He says, The Pasuk, which says that Hashem will, you know, will make you susceptible to extreme anger, that's a reference to Golas, Babel Ksiv. It's in Babel over there, you know, it's out of Eretz Yisrael, and you're susceptible to anger. But how does this happen in Eretz Yisrael? He thought it happened already in Eretz Yisrael. Amalei Su'ul says, don't worry, it was right outside Eretz Yisrael. How shot at that point? Well, you have really on the yard, no, we hadn't yet crossed the yard in. So that explained the story. Amar Rabba Baraf Huna is a person who's involved in anger, he doesn't even have regard to the Shechina, he totally loses his mind, everything is just like overboard. A Rasha was involved in anger, he doesn't even feel Hashem's presence. And the first explain, anger is an expression of Weakness and in, in amuna, in faith and trust in Hashem, for a person who really um, lives with a constant, with Hashem's constant presence and knows that everything's from Hashem, Gamsal it, it doesn't allow any any sentiments of irritation or anger. It's all from Hashem and all expression of love, and everything is just uh, part of that um, beautiful arrangement. And all people who are, uh, you know, um, all just emissary shluchim of Hashem. There's no room for anger. 
Rav Yirmiyam Bidif Tiyamar, he explained as follows. A person who is involved in anger, Meshakech Talmudai, it causes him to forget his learning. Umoysef Tipshis, and it adds silliness. Shenemar Kikas Bechek Kisil Yenuach. So Kas is synonymous with Ksil, with lack of wisdom. Uksiv Uksil Yifraisi Veles, it says that the, the Ksil, uh, expands the 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 uh, evelas the um, uh, you know silliness and um, he's moisiv tipshus the Ran says it just uh, increases his his um, his silliness. Rav Nachman bar Yitzchak a person who's angry to be a doer shav I noisav Reuben mischayosav it is uh, a clear a sign that his avera is. Are more numerous than a schusam. Shnemar a bal chema rav pesha. A person who's a bal chema, a man of anger, it's an expression of the um, multitude of, of averus that he has. Omar ab ada bar chanina. Here comes an interesting gemara. Il mole chato yisro. If it were not that klai yisro did the uh, the chet in the midbar, the eagle, so if not for the eagle. All they would have gotten were the Chamisha Chamisha Torah and the Sefer Yeshua. We'll see in a minute why. What's uh, special about Yeshua as opposed to the other Nevi'im Uksum? Because it describes you know, the details of Eretz Yisrael and how it was meant to be allocated, etc. So that was crucial. So that's all they would have gotten. Five Chamisha Chamisha and Yeshua. My time, and why not more? Kibarev Chachma Rav Kaz, because the uh, Nevi'im and you know all the lessons contained therein are really an expression, uh, for the most part, the Ran says, most of the Divri Chachma and Nevi'im are an expression, are an indication of the Kaz, of the anger that the Kalisrol were. Um, you know, instigated by, by Hashem due to their misdeeds throughout the Deiris. So that was only sort of a, a consequence of their lower level, so to speak. So their their deficiencies and their faults brought about the uh, the expansion of, of the Torah, etc. Uh, and that's why we have the Nevi'im Muksuvim. Now the obvious question is, so uh, does that mean to say that Nevi'im Muksuvim are just uh, there out of, out of uh, you know, Consequence out of circumstance, but not really, you know, um, you know a primary uh, source of of our of of, of, of you know of Torah of, of, of lessons, etc. So the interesting, the Mefarish, you know, the uh, the left the left Mefarish, the Rashi over here, he says that um, because they did the Chet, I'll just read it inside around seven eight lines from the top in the left column of the Daf. He says, "Mefisha bato v'chato, noisav lahem roiv chachma." And because of their chatoim, they were given the extra svar, Revim Aksuvim, and he adds two words, Lahatrichan Yesm, to give him extra work, so to speak. So it almost sounds like Revim Aksuvim are just there to give us a hard time, which is a little bit, you know, uh, hard to believe. We have to uh, try to delve into this a bit deeper. Now, the rush actually says like this um, this is the uh, one, two, three, the fourth piece in the rush, Pirusha Rush. He says, He says, not to say that what we, what we find in the Nevi'im Aksuvim are just, you know, secondary. He said, actually, if not for us receiving the additional Svarim of Nach, just having the Chemish Chemish Torah, that would have been enough. You know why? By learning the uh, we would have received the same schar so he puts it in perspective sure everything contained in the the in the Nevi Maksuvim are eternal are, are worthy as can be of course a part of Tanakh but if it were not for the eagle we would have gotten all that within the Chamesh Torah and learning the Chamesh Torah would have given us would have um, allowed us to to access everything that we find today in the in the Tanakh. So I saw the Etzioisim and other Mefarshim explain like this. You see, the Rambam says, "What is the 
most effective antidote to the Yitzhahara? The answer, of course, is Torah. So by saturating a person's mind and heart with words of Torah, with words of Chachma, by filling the lave with Chachma, it, 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 it blocks out, the Rambam says it blocks out all inappropriate thoughts and desires. When a person is filled with beauty, with light, that permeates his entire existence and everything else just keeps far away. That's the Rambam. And so if uh, Yisurabiya. Now, it would seem from the rush that prior to the, the Chet, Kalal Yisrael were on a high level and wouldn't need so much, so to speak, so much involvement in, in Torah to get the same effect. It's her was sort of on a low flame and therefore even just accessing the Torah on a more concentrated level, that would give us access to everything we need. But after the Chet Eagle, our level is sort of dropped. Our Yitzhara expanded in order to counteract that Yitzhara, in order to accommodate, so to speak, to transform that raw energy into Kedusha. We need more effort. <laughs> so we need the Nevi Muksuvim, which enable us that more extensive involvement in Torah. You go through the Tanakh and all the you know, poetic language and the repetition, all that, all that extensive involvement allows us to counteract this bigger and, and greater and expanded Yitzhahara. And that Torah now, measure for measure, that Torah will now allow us to transform this supersized Yitzhahara and bring it into Kedusha the way it was supposed to, the way, where it belongs. So before the Chet, a smaller compact Torah would have done the job. But now, we need everything, everything we can get our hands on to do the job. That's what the Rashi meant. We have the more, more the, more, the more, the Reif Chachma, the Sha'ar Asfarm, the Hatrich on Yaisa. That extra Tircha, that extra involvement, that extra effort is needed to arrive at that same uh, destination to transform the Yitzhahara of today. Continues the Gemara. Amar of Asi, Enes Kokin, Lelekei Yisrael. Ran explains. We're speaking about a Shavuah, in contrast to a nether, which doesn't typically invoke Hashem's name. A Shavuah needs to refer to Hashem and to Hashem's name, whether He said it explicitly or not, but that's the essence of a Shavuah. It relates to Hashem's existence. We don't get involved in releasing a person from a Shavuah. We don't do it. Except when it involves a mitzvah like Shalom, by to restore you know, domestic harmony. This fellow had made a neder, a shvua, compelling his wife to keep away from him. She took my money back, she she hit my child, and it turns out to be false. It turns out she didn't take it, she didn't hit to strike the child. In any case, he's just using an example of why a person would regret his shvua. Bottom line is, typically we don't get involved in releasing a person from Shavuot. We try to teach him a lesson. Don't get involved in these things, except where it involves a mitzvah like Shalom Bais. Ha'yidah soil come to Rav Asi. So this Isha approaches Rav Asi. Omar Allah, he asks her, B'may nadart. You know, what uh, method of, of nether did you use? Belkei Yisrael. I used Hashem's name, so uh, I made a Shavuot in Hashem's name. Omar Allah, he tells her like this. Sorry, I can't help you. Ino dart b'mohi. So mohi is an Aramaic translation of shvua. If you would have just used that, it's like a kinu. She kinu ba'am, it's just like sort of a, a distorted, you know, expression of shvua. It's not a direct reference to Hashem. Miz da kikinu lach. Yeah, then I would uh, tend to your shvua and try to release you. Hashtad lein dart b'mohi. Now that you did not use that term, Ela b'lekei Yisrael, you went directly to Hashem. Loi miz da kikinu lach. I will not help you out. Teach you a lesson. Rav Kahana. He came to visit Ikla Lebe Rav Yosef to Rav Yosef. Omar Le Rav Yosef, the host, asked him to, uh, you know, to uh, join him, uh, take some food. Litay Marmidi, please have a, have something to eat. Omar Le, so Rav Kahana responds, Loi, uh, no. And he added, Mari Kaila, the name of Hashem, the master of all. Loi to Imna I will not, you know, take his food. So he made a shvua. Omar Le, Rav Yisab responds, 
It's sort of like echoed his words, in the name of Hashem, you won't, you know, have his food. Why did he do that? I understand why the guest of Kahana insisted with a, with a shvua and refused his invitation. Why would Rav Yosef, the host, repeat those words? What, what, what was the purpose of that? Answers the Gemara, He was trying to tell him as follows. Did you actually, you know, say it like that? You know, you swore in the name of Hashem that you're not going to have my food? Now you're stuck. You can't, uh, you can't accept the invitation because Allah is, we don't uh, release a person from a Shavua. Amar Rav, Amar Nachman, the Allah is is different. So yesterday we had a whole discussion regarding how to release a person of nether. Whether charata, regret, is sufficient or you need more than that. Allah is, charata is enough. Number one. Number two, when it's kokin, little case stroll, even in terms of a shavua, which references Hashem, we can go ahead and release him when necessary. Says the Gemara Mishtabeach Le Rava Le Rav Nachman. Rava, uh, while speaking to Rav Nachman, would praise uh, another uh, Amoira, Rav Schera. He would praise Rav Schera by uh, by saying that he's a great man. The Adam Gadol. So Rava praised Rav Schera in the eyes of Rav Nachman. Amalei, so Rav Nachman says, okay, let me uh, take a look at him. When next time Rav Schera comes to you, please bring him to me so I can converse with him. So next time he came, Havale Nidra Le Mishra. Rav Schera had a nether which he wanted to have, uh, uh, you know, revoked. Also, I'll come Rav Nachman. So Rav, Nach, Rav Schreder approaches Rav Nachman, who was an expert, and he was able to release him. Amalei, so Rav Nachman got the process going. He asks him like this. Now, Dard, Adat Adahachi, I want to ask you something. Did you, um, did you, when you made the nether, did you envision this type of consequence, that it's going to be so difficult? Amalei, in, he says, sure, Adat Adahachi. Uh, in, yes, correct. No surprises. He asked him again, what about the other consequence? Do you foresee that? In, he says, yeah. <laughs> he tried this a couple of times. And Rav Nachman became frustrated. Ikpid Rav Nachman. Nachman was uh, makbid, got frustrated with him because he wasn't really, you know, cooperating with the Atoros and Durham process. Rav Nachman was trying to help him out and he was sort of uh, deflecting it. Go to, back to your, uh, to, you know, your host, your the entrance to your home. It's just a way of saying, go back home. Nafak Rav Schura. Oh, so now Rav Schura found his way out of the nether. Upasach Pischal Nafshei. And he discovered a way out. Why? Because this he didn't expect. Rav Nachman is going to have Agmas Nefesh. He's going to be upset at his, uh, at his behavior. That's a perfect Pesach. That's a way out. I didn't, I didn't expect this. So he says like this. This is Rav Schreira speaking. Rabbi Omer, this is a Mishnah Perki Yavis. Rabbi says, Eizohi derech yishara sheyavar lehaldam. In life, there are so many different, you know, uh, twists and turns and ways of life. What's the optimum way of life? What's the most recommended mahalach? The answer is a perfect balance. Kol shitif eres leyaseh, any activity, any lifestyle which brings pleasantness to its its doer, it's pleasant it's gishmak, it's enjoyable not too overwhelming and overburdening number one so the person has to enjoy it but the first thing in other and likewise your surroundings, your community, your friends your associates should feel that pleasantness as well that's a good sign so knowing that says of Sechira I'm not really conforming. Now that I see Rav Nachman is quite unhappy with my commitments here, with my Nadarim, I didn't have this in mind. And therefore, he used this to release himself of the Nadar. And Iran points out, of course, he couldn't do it himself. But it means to say he used this argument in front of the Bezd, in front of the Chacham, and that enabled them to release him of his Nadar. Rav Shimon, the son of Rabbi, Havali Nidra Mishra. 
He also had a nether to uh, to remove. Also, the Kamehameha to Rabbanim. He came to the Rabbanim. Amrily, they started questioning him. Nadra Sadat Adahachi. Did you anticipate this uh, consequence when you made the nether? Amar um, in, he says, sure. Adat Adahachi, what about the other consequence, the other difficulty that your nether is causing? And yes, I had that in mind too. Kamehameha Zimnin, once again, they tried this numerous times. I'm with Stavri Rabbanim, Mishim Shalatullah. And as this was going on, you know, and progressing, you know, they, um, they had been sitting and, you know, it started getting sunny. They had to go over to the shade. Then as they were sitting there in the shade, it started getting sunny there, you know, as the sun was moving around. And they went back to the to the sun, you know, the place of the sun. Basically, they were just hopping back and forth and it was getting quite, um, you know, burdensome. Amrle, let's skip the, the brackets. Amrle Batnes, so Batnes braid the Abishob and Batnes. Batnes, the son of Abishob and Batnes, turned to Rabbi Shimon. He says, uh, If you would have known, you know, how uh, <laughs> how uh, inconveniencing this would be to the Chachamim. If you would have had known, if you would have had known that uh, this, is, this would have been the result of your nether. You're going to chase the chacham around from the sun to the shade, etc. Would you have done the nether? Amar he says, absolutely not, Vishar Yua. And this was enough to release him of his nether. Okay, we continue tomorrow. So basically, we learned that the Allah is we use charata as a form of release from a nether. And even by shvois, we do apply the concept of ataras and dharma, ataras shvois, in contrast to the shita, which says we don't use that method except where it's involving a mitzvah like Shalom Bayis. However, the Gemara does tell us, uh, as terrible as a nether is, like a bama, like a carbon on the bama, it's uh, something which is related to Rishayim, uh, it, it uh, triggers an examination in Shemayim, but we don't use those methods, perhaps they'll be too intimidating and won't really be reflective of the person's true, genuine uh, sentiments at that time. So you have to sort of play the balance. On the one hand, you want to discourage him from, from keeping that nether, but you can't overwhelm him for concern that his regret won't really be genuine. Uh, we learned about the story of this um, of these um, travel companions of Ula, and how Rabbi Yechon responded. We learned about the downside of Kas and the upside of uh, finding a true balance in life. Teferis le'iseha, teferis le'imena adam. Bachar to all of us and be well.